obviously Adam Wainwright's being activated today. Um, so we optioned Austin Dean. Um, tomorrow's starter, I think was listed as Oviedo. We still have to decide what that corresponding move looks like. That'll be TBD, um, which then jumps us to kind of where we are with Hicks who um, underwent an MRI today that's still being reviewed by our, uh, our doctors. So don't have an answer on that. Likely we'll have some response by uh, post game tonight. And then um, got encouraging news on Ponce, perhaps likely going to receive an injection um, to reduce the inflammation, but overall um, nothing structural, which is uh, obviously encouraging. Then uh, Yachty will be reevaluated um, in the coming days to determine when he can return to baseball activity. So we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, Nagowski will likely begin his rehab on Thursday or Friday in Memphis. Um, Andrew Miller, as of yet, has not been cleared for baseball activity. So that's uh, still a TBD. And then uh, finally, Michaelis will be uh, begin his rehab uh, with Memphis on Wednesday. So that's a lot, but um, yeah, so here we are. All right, Jeff Jones, Belleville, Mass Democrat, floor is yours. Mo, for Oviedo to start tomorrow to be recalled, there will have to be an injured list move. Is the decision in the waiting on Hicks just a matter of the severity? Is the expectation that he'll be that move tomorrow? Yeah, I hate always like placing someone on that until we have a complete medical uh, review. So that's why I just said, Jeff, that we would follow up on this post game today. So then I guess the other question is, if the follow up, I mean, what what is the other move then? What is the other possibility? Is there a possibility that Oviedo does not start tomorrow? Or, or I mean, I guess I don't know how to square that circle is my point. Oh, well, allow me to. Um, we would probably then have to option someone else or put someone on the IL. So lots of moves potentially. But Oviedo would still be within his 10 days tomorrow, correct? So that kind of takes the So you need the IL, yeah, exactly. But that's why we want to wait until after the doctors review everything. Thank you. Any other, any other questions for Mel? Derek Gold, St. Louis Post Dispatch. Mo, I'll just I'll play the fool here. Um, because you put Miller on the IL and Ponce de Leon on the IL, aren't those the pitcher moves that make Oviedo available to come back? No, they don't, because there were other corresponding moves that that went with those. Um, to actually trigger a player to shorten the 10 day, you have to have them be a part of that move. So, in other words, when Andrew Miller was put on the IL, Oviedo would have had to have been recalled at that point. Did you consider doing that? We or did. We, we, we did. But, um, you know, ultimately, we would have done something different had the most recent um, situation with Hicks not arisen. So, you know, very fluid, but it was something that we were working through this weekend. But, yes, we did consider it that last Thursday. Okay. And the, the, the part about the COVID IL that I don't understand is, does that follow the same rules in that regard? No. Like, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so, so you have a lot more flexibility with, with the COVID IL mm -hmm. than you do with the traditional IL. Um, and that's obviously done so to protect your organization or your team that you're not bringing someone in that potentially could have been exposed that could create everything we experienced last summer. And and that's not like a, it's just, it seems like it exists in a bubble, no pun intended, to the other IL, even though it shares the name, it's operated completely different. Correct. Okay. Katie Wu, The Athletic. Hello, happy Monday. Um, just looking at, at all the different rehab assignments, when, when it comes to Miles, and I know that you don't exactly like to put timetables on, on guys when they're coming back, especially in Miles' case, but what, what is the expect, expectation for him at Memphis and how many starts do you plan on him seeing or is this more indicative of how he feels? I would imagine you're gonna be looking at somewhere between three or four. You're right, I don't like to make those predictions, but just in a sense of to build himself up. 
to be able to then step into a major league game and, and not have to be under any type of uh, pitch limitation. Having said that, it's also going to be like, how does he feel? Um, you know, how is he pitching? How's the ball coming out of his hand? Uh, to some level, what, what's performance look like? But, um, you know, ultimately, I think he's feeling pretty good about where he's at. And I think he's looking forward to getting this started. Thank you. Brian Walden, the Cardinal Nation. Mo, with the alternate camp having ended, um, does the taxi squad continue and how does that change, if at all, with the players now in Memphis instead of just in Sauge? Okay, so when you are at home, you are allowed one person to be on the taxi squad and that could be a catcher. We are, we are not going to have a backup catcher for this homestand. The reason being is because we're at home and Memphis will be playing um, at home as well. So it's a short four hour drive if we do need to, to have someone come up. Um, when we are on the road, you are allowed to take up to five players, including a catcher, as a taxi squad when you're traveling. So a lot of what our taxi squad will look like when we begin our road trips will be, you know, what type of travel are we looking at between our Memphis club and our big league club? So. Um, you know, like our next trip, for example, we go to Milwaukee, then to San Diego. So obviously nothing's very close to San Diego. So we'll probably have to ramp up on the taxi squad for that particular trip. And then the following one as well. So it's just something that we will um, manage that way. We won't always have five, but we will likely probably always have at least three on that. And in terms of uh, how we look at, at the transportation, obviously, whenever we can drive, that'll be our preference. So the taxi squad is really going to stay with us for the foreseeable future. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Frank Cusimano, KSBK TV support. John, for the last couple of years, you've been talking about wanting to find out about your young outfielders. And I know it's still early May, but what you're seeing from Tyler O'Neill, can you give me your take on his progress and his growth as a, as a hitter right now? Um, sure. I think, uh, you know, when you look at him offensively, you're starting to see what we really thought we might be seeing a, a year ago. Um, you know, I think he's uh, handling the off-speed pitchers better. Um, he's, he's staying within himself. He's not trying to do too much, but he still has that just legitimate raw power. When he does center a ball, it, it goes a long way. So it's, it's just an uh, exciting skill set that seems to be uh, coming together at the right time and, and certainly uh, happy to see that. Thanks. Jim Hayes, Valley Sports Midwest. Hey, Mo, um, just your thoughts on uh, what we're seeing from Carlos, who has gotten better and better as the season progressed. Can you just give us your thoughts on Carlos Martinez? Uh, great to see. Uh, you know, clearly, when you think back to that, that first two weeks of the season, and, and not just Carlos, but the rotation in general, um, wasn't taking us deep into game. So that was obviously a, a big concern when you're putting so much pressure on your bullpen. But um, Carlos specifically, you know, he was around the zone yesterday, um, was getting a ton of ground balls, which is exactly what you want to see out of him. And I think when you're not necessarily chasing the strikeout, he, he was able to go deeper into the game because his pitch count was so low. And um, obviously, from our standpoint, that's what we need to see. And so um, I think his evolution of the last um, three starts have been in a, in a very positive direction for, for all of us. One other thing, and again, uh, I'll be the idiot on this one. Um, but <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> but um, Schultz said, you know, that, that Hicks was in a holding pattern yesterday, but they were going to do additional testing. Has anything been seen, discovered that has changed your opinion of what it could be prior to the imaging, or is it exactly the same and you're just waiting for imaging better or worse? Is there anything that sort of changed your outlook on him? I don't even know where to begin on that question. It was bad for the record. Um, <laughs> as I stated earlier, we're going to allow the doctors to weigh in. I have seen a lot of MRIs in my life, but I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not educated to read them. So no, what I, my, my question was, my question was, did anything during the additional testing or time you guys had to look at him change before he had the imaging today that you're waiting for? That's all I'm asking. It's pretty 
simple. simple question? The answer is, I don't know. Like everybody else on this call is like frustrated now, Jim. <laughs> you ruined it for the group. We had a lot of mojo going too. That's why we can't have nice things. How about Thank Ben? You. That's Ben a question. Ben Fredrickson, St. Louis Post Dispatch. Well, I wanted to ask you about the outfielders as well. Is this the outfield that you would have liked to see early that you're just now getting a chance to see all together? I mean, the, these guys are, the three of them didn't get to start all together since until May um, because of the injuries. And, and also, I guess as a secondary to that, do you sense that Tyler and, and Harrison were kind of aware that the opportunities that were created for others by their injuries might have ended in a situation that resulted in less opportunity for them? Um, let's start with the first part. Um, obviously we were, we're excited to see the outfield that we're currently playing with, uh, Dylan Bader and, and Carlson. And, you know, I, I think, um, in terms of, of when a player goes down, you know, our, our, uh, strategy has always been next man up, which if someone takes advantage of that, that can put you in a peculiar spot, but, you know, having said that, the, the way we sort of envisioned this outfield was exactly what you're seeing now. And I think from a defensive standpoint, you can see why. And then obviously when you're, when you're seeing Bader swing the bat like he has, I mean, that, that's exciting. And, um, I mean, obviously a very capable player. And I think he complements the corners very well. So, you know, I'm certainly excited to watch this group go out there and uh, play every night. Zach Silver, oh, in the spirit of just covering the bases, I guess, is there anything to go to Hudson is doing, improving, changing? I guess what is his status and where is he at in his rehab? Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't take notes on, on Mr. Hudson, but um, I do recall reading a note on him this morning and, um, you know, everything's going well for him. Obviously it's baby steps right now, but, uh, you know, he's uh, in a good spot mentally. He is um, working daily and, uh, you know, obviously I think when we get a little deeper in the summer, we might have something more tangible to speak about in terms of where he is from his throwing program. But, um, you know, he is uh, taking those first steps and it seems to be going well. You're cool. Hey, Mo, um, this is the first time we've had a chance to ask you and I know how involved and interested you are in rules. Do you, after watching what happened last week with Genesis, think the three batter minimum rule needs to be reviewed, audited, reconsidered? You know, I think when you're when you when you're making rules and, and, and rule changes, I should say, there's always that unintended consequence of 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 something that no matter how hard you vet it, this game will surprise you and something will come up. And um, you know, I don't know what the perfect um, result of of trying to change that would be other than you know maybe the umpires have the ability to to either eject the player or to allow you to do something for the safety of the next hitter type of thing but um you know clearly at that moment in time it would have been a lot easier to remove the player than to have to make them pitch has there been any formal discussion about reviewing that rule on on your group with your group nothing that i've heard no rob range the Real sports page promoted the um, changes that the city made today as far as going to 100 percent capacity and bars and restaurants and everything do anything as far as you guys are concerned about increasing the you know number of people you're allowing to the stadium you know i have not paid attention to anything newsworthy today so i don't know um, been just dealing with a lot of roster moves today. So when I leave here, I'll uh, kind of poke my head in and see if anything uh, positive on that for us. Jim, Ben, did you guys have one more? No, I'm good. Jim Lawrence forgets to put his hand down. Yeah, one more. All right, Ben. Well, we ask you a lot about trades that are rumored, and we ask you a lot about trades that have happened in the that have, that that might happen. But what about one that didn't happen? Because you guys are playing the Mets, um, there was that time in 2019 where there was a lot of discussion about Zach Wheeler as a rental, and they were reportedly either asking for Harrison or Tyler um, and perhaps additional players. Um, why didn't you guys 
make that move? And, and was that because you guys believed in what you think Harrison and Tyler can do still? Well, I think, you know, a lot of the ways we, we try to build this team is, is about the future. And when you're looking at, at those types of players that have a, a, a very large upside and they're young and they're, they're just, they're a bit unproven, but given where we were and where we wanted to go, it just, it, it just seemed a little rich for, for what we were willing to do at that time, obviously, or we would have made the deal, but, um, you know, obviously that guy's got a big arm, um, you know, sitting 98 after seven, it was pretty impressive, but, um, you know, certainly, uh, glad that deal didn't happen. And, um, you know, uh, glad that, that Bader and O'Neill are on our club. 